This is a reading of an imaginary story entitled The Visited Planet. It was written by James B. Phillips and was found in his book New Testament Christianity, which was first published in 1956. Once upon a time, a very young angel was being shown round the splendors and glories of the universe by a senior and experienced angel. And to tell the truth, the little angel was beginning to be tired and a little bored. He had been shown whirling galaxies and blazing suns, infinite distances in the earth's deathly cold of interstellar space. And to his mind there seemed to be an awful lot of it all. Finally, he was shown the galaxy of which our planetary system is but a small part. And as the two of them drew near to the star, which we call our sun, and to its circling planets, the senior angel pointed to a small and rather insignificant sphere turning very slowly on its axis. It looked as dull as a dirty tennis ball to the little angel, whose mind was filled with the size and glory of what he had seen. I want you to watch that one particularly, said the senior angel, pointing with his finger. Well, it looks very small and dirty to me, said the little angel. What's special about that one? That is the visited planet, said the senior angel. Visited? You mean visited by... Indeed I do. That ball, which I have no doubt looks to you small and insignificant, and perhaps not over clean, has been visited by our young Prince of Glory. And at those words he bowed his head reverently. But how, said the little angel, do you mean that our great and glorious Prince, with all the wonders and splendors of his creation, and millions more that I'm sure I haven't seen yet, went down in person to that fifth-rate little ball? Why would he do a thing like that? It isn't for us to question his whys, said the senior angel, except that I must point out to you that he's not impressed by size and numbers, as you seem to be, but that he really went, I know, and all of us in heaven who know anything know that. And as to why he became one of them, how else do you suppose he could visit them? The little angel's face wrinkled in disgust. Do you mean to tell me that he stooped so low as to become one of those creeping, crawling creatures on that floating ball? I do, said the senior angel, and I don't think he would like for you to call them creeping, crawling creatures in that tone of voice. For strange as it may seem to us, he loves them. He went down to visit them and lift them up to become like him. The little angel looked blank. Such a thought was almost beyond his comprehension. Close your eyes now for a moment, said the senior angel, and we will go back in what they call time. So while the little angel's eyes were closed and the two of them moved nearer to the spinning ball, it stopped. It spun backwards quite fast for a while and then slowly resumed its usual rotation. Now look, said the senior angel, and as the little angel did as he was told, there appeared here and there, on the dull surface of that globe, little flashes of light, some merely momentary and some persisting for a longer period of time. 
Well, what am I seeing now? Asked the little angel. You are watching this little world as it was some ten thousands of years ago, said the senior angel. Every flash and glow of light that you see is something of the Father's knowledge and wisdom, breaking into the minds and hearts of people who live upon the earth. Not many people, you see, can hear his voice or understand what he says, even though he's speaking gently and quietly to them all the time. Well, why are they so blind and deaf and stupid? asked the little angel. It's not for us to judge them, said the senior angel. We who live in the splendor have no idea what it is to like, what it's like to live in the dark. We hear the music and the voice like the sound of many waters every day of our lives. But to them, well, there's much darkness and much noise and much distraction upon the earth. Only a few who are quiet and humble and wise hear his voice. But watch for a moment, and then you will see something truly wonderful. The earth went on turning and circling round the sun, and then quite suddenly, in the upper half of the globe, there appeared a light so bright in its intensity that both of the angels hid their eyes. In a hushed tone of voice, the little angel said, I think I can guess. That was the visit, wasn't it? Yes, said the senior angel. That was the visit. The light himself went down and lived among them. But in a moment, and you'll be able to tell that even with your eyes closed, the light will go out. But why? asked the little angel. Could he not bear their darkness and stupidity? Did he have to return here? With a stern voice, the senior angel said, No, it wasn't that. They failed to recognize him for who he was, or at least only a handful knew him, and for the most part they preferred their darkness to his light. And in the end, they killed him. The fools! The crazy fools! They don't deserve... Neither you nor I, nor any other angel, knows why they were so foolish and so wicked, explained the senior angel. Nor can we say what they deserve or don't deserve. But the fact remains, they killed our Prince of Glory while he was man amongst them. And that, I suppose, was the end, said the little angel. I see the whole earth has gone black and dark. All right, I won't judge him, but surely that's all they could expect. Wait, said the senior angel. We are still far from the end of the story. Watch now, but be ready to cover your eyes again. In utter blackness, the earth turned around three times, and then there blazed with unbearable radiance the bright light. Shielding his eyes, the little angel said, What now? The senior angel explained, they killed him, all right. But he conquered death. The thing most of them dread and fear all their lives, he broke and conquered. He rose again, and a few of them saw him, and from then on became his utterly devoted slaves. 
Well, thank God for that, said the little angel. Amen, said the senior angel, but open your eyes now. The dazzling light has gone. The prince has returned to his home of glory. But look at the earth now. And as they looked, in place of the dazzling light, there was a bright glow which throbbed and pulsated. And as the earth turned many times, little points of light spread out. A few flickered and died. But for the most part, the lights continued to burn. And as they continued to watch, and in many parts of the globe, there was a glow over many areas. You see what is happening? said the senior angel. The bright glow is the company of loyal men and women that our prince left behind. And as they live his life, they spread the glow, and now lights begin to shine all over the earth. Yes, yes, said the little angel impatiently. But how does it end? Will the little lights join up? with each other? Will it, will it all be light as it is in heaven? We simply do not know, said the senior angel. It's in the Father's hands. Sometimes it's agony to watch. Sometimes it's joy unspeakable. The end is not yet. But now I'm sure you can see why this little ball is so important. He has visited it. He is working out his plan upon it. Yes, I see, said the little angel. But I don't understand. But I shall never forget that this is the visited planet. <laughs>